Is it possible that we can get these medium honey super frames drawn out in the month of August after the nectar flow has sort of uh, tapered off? Hey everybody, David Burns, EAS Master Beekeeper. Today we're going to do an experiment. We're actually going to take these frames that aren't drawn out yet. We're going to put them on a hive to see if in late August, after the nectar flow has ended, can bees still draw out these medium honey supers? Now, this is a question that all of you have been asking me. Well, not all of you, maybe two of you didn't, but most people have been asking me, hey, my hive is overcrowded. It's gonna be hot this week. They need more room, they need more space. Should I give them another super? This late in the year, will it work? Well, to help you answer that question, we're just gonna go out there and do it. Now, I have some criteria that is necessary for me personally for bees to attempt this. Number one, we've got to select a very strong colony. Number two, they have to have all their combs already drawn out. They can't be working on some other stuff. They have to be ready to add wax to these frames that we put on and not be in competition with other frames. Number three, it really does need to have a little nectar flow out there. I mean, we have to have something for them to work in order to get that um, nectar and honey in order to make wax with their wax glands. So that's gonna be important. And we've got that around here. You know, fall isn't a great time of the year to get nectar, but we've had a little rain, so that's helped a lot. But the most important thing, the most important thing, woo, I'm excited about, we've gotta add wax to these frames. Now they came with wax already on there, but I don't see anything. It's pretty thin layer. So for me to really uh, go at this and do an experiment, I'm gonna wax the heck out of these frames and you're gonna help me do it. Well, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do then is put our wax on our frames. This is a hot skillet, purchased it at Walmart years ago, has a thermostat I can adjust. So I heat it up and I melt all the wax from my wax cappings that I save. And then I reuse it for projects like this. I just buy a cheap little uh, paintbrush to brush my wax on my frames. But the first thing we gotta do guys, we actually have to date these frames because we're doing a little experiment to see how long it's gonna take my bees, and even if they can, draw this out in August. So I have got some shipping tape that's got the little strings in it. And I have found over the years that if I use this tape on frames, then the bees don't try to tear it off or eat it, chew it up or anything and that way I can take it off. I used to mark my frames right on the wood, <laughs> but then I realized, well, you can't change that, you have to scribble it out. This way I can peel off this tape. It's a great way to do it. Today is August the 19th, 2023, so we're just gonna keep marking all 10 of these frames so there's no confusion and we can get a good idea of how long it's gonna take. So let me just mark these real quick. While I finish up marking these guys, let me encourage you to please join me for my live stream every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. We have so much fun. I have a ball helping you guys out, answering questions. It's a place for us to join together in a Beak Squad community and just spend time together. So just remember, every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. For experimental purposes, we're gonna leave one frame with only the thin layer of wax that it came with from the manufacturer. So we're actually gonna write NW on this one. NW stands for no wax. And that way we can compare this one that didn't get any wax coating on it and to see if it was less pulled out. And we'll, we'll just experiment. So I've placed uh, NW on this one, we'll take a look. So that's one we're not gonna wax. And now we're finishing up number 10. So we've got all our frames marked and identified so we can watch how they are pulled out in the course of August. Now, let me give you a hint about adding wax to frames. It does help the bees draw it out a lot faster and sooner. I've made several videos in the past about adding wax to frames. If you've missed those, I'm sorry, but we're gonna uh, fortunately do it again today for you. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna wait for your wax to get a little tacky on top. You can see around the edges, it's already getting white. That means that it's no longer uh, liquid, entirely just hot boiling liquid, but it's getting tacky. The reason why you wait until it becomes tacky is so that the wax is a little more thicker and you can get more on your frames like this. Now, I'm gonna be extremely generous. And look at that, the bees are already wanting to draw this out. They're flying around it. 
Can you imagine that? Watch out, B, you're gonna get hot. But look at that, I'm adding this wax. It doesn't have to be perfectly uniformity or anything like that. Just putting it on there pretty liberally. And this is gonna be used by the bees to help draw this out. Isn't that, a, isn't that amazing? Just take a look at that. And so something like this is, is, is what works well for me. If you wanna just uh, go crazy and put a ton of wax on there, um, it won't hurt a thing. I've done experiments where I've added a lot of wax and it does seem like the more wax I add, the more they pull out. Let me caution you also, if you do add the wax when it, the wax is too hot, it is gonna cause the actual frames to warp a little bit. I had to turn my heat back up because it was getting way too tacky and I was uh, got distracted and I forgot to turn it down before it got really hot. And you can see already by applying this coat how it may have kind of caused this to bubble out just a little bit. So be careful about that. This foundation though is, is pretty tough, it's pretty thick, but if you have some foundation that isn't, it will cause it to buckle a little bit. That may be sometimes when you get some wonky comb, if your foundation isn't really straight in that case like that. So just let the wax sort of cool off and start to get cooler and tackier because you can get a lot more on there as well. All right, we got two more to go. Then we're going out to the hive. How are you guys doing? Are you doing okay today? It's Saturday when I'm making this video. I don't know if I'll get it published on a Saturday. So happy Saturday to you. Woo! You're doing all right with life in general. Um, life treating you okay. Life treats us all pretty much the same, doesn't it? You know, we have the same amount of problems and struggles. We have the same amount of time each day. We have the same amount of, pretty much same amount of issues going on in our lives. Uh, even though some people seem to have, you know, facing more challenges maybe. Um, it happens to all of us. We all have times when we have to, you know, think about, oh my gosh, am I gonna lose my job? Am I gonna have a health concern? Am I gonna have family issues? You know, is everything going okay in your life? Just, just remember, and I'm here to tell you that life never ceases to be a struggle. But you just gotta find a way to exist and live life even though it's a struggle, you've got to get the most out of life, you know? You've got to really try to muscle through it, put everything you can into not just getting overwhelmed with life, but try to get by every day being thankful somehow that you're alive and things aren't as bad as they could be. They could be worse, I guess. And, you know, hey, it, most of us are beekeepers because we we are enjoying outdoor stuff like beekeeping. And a lot of you have other outdoor activities that you do if you're a beekeeper. You might be a hunter, might be a fisherman, you might have some gardening that you like to do outdoors. Most beekeepers uh, are people that love to be outdoors. And that's why it draws us into beekeeping. We, we like being outdoors. We like, we like bugs. <laughs> Most people who are beekeepers really do um, kind of have a fascination for insects, wildlife, and uh, I know I do, always have, even as a kid, you know, I was a kid that was always collecting bugs, uh, watching bugs do stuff, watching animals do things. I had a bug collection um, where you pin the bugs, you know, in the styrofoam and you identify your bugs, and I always enjoyed bugs, still do today, uh, and that maybe that's what gets us into bees a little bit more, is that we, we're just outdoors people. But if you are going through some tough times, remember, maybe you need to take a little more time for yourself and get outdoors. You know, um, I've, there's a lot of studies done that shows that if you spend time in nature, uh, it helps with your depression, helps with your anxiety, is to get outdoors. And maybe some of you are keeping bees because you found that it is helping you with some of your um, anxiety and depression. Um, I think it's great to be involved in an outdoor activity because sometimes life does cave in on us and it's kind of tough to get out of it. So today let's go further outdoors and go into a hive today and place these frames in there and see if they can pull it out in August. Now let me tell you again, what we're looking for is a very, very strong colony. It needs to be overpopulated, 
it kind of needs to be crowded. Now, which hive should we put our super on? We could put it on the flow hive, but I kind of like how they're doing, and actually they're doing quite nicely. Um, they have all the top frames filled up and capped over. Look at this. Wow, all the way to the wall capped over, so we need to harvest that. So I really don't want to mess with the flow hive, but I've got to choose one of the hives out here that are very strong. And so we've got some pretty active, strong colonies. My horizontal hive is doing well, but a super is not going to fit on it because of the way it's designed. But I, I really love the way that looks. Oh, and be sure and subscribe to this video <laughs> if you really like what I'm doing today. This hive has done really well, but, um, you know, they've got their pretty much supers on top. They're already done three, so... They are bringing in some pollen. This hive's doing well, but they have two supers on. I've actually started feeding this one some fall feed. You can see my Burns feeder board here, so I don't want to mess with that. This hive is one that I'm using all medium supers on. So I don't want to add anything to this one. Uh, so maybe here, this might be an option here. They look pretty strong, only have two deeps on, no super. Um, I kind of like this one back here. It attracts me to the number of bees on the front. They're probably pretty full and they do have a super though. And this one, I damaged the hive a little bit when I was mowing. It doesn't look horribly strong on the front, but maybe it is. But I'm gonna be honest with you, this is the one that I wanna do. Now they already have a super, but look at the number of bees out on the front. So I know they have a lot of bees in there. They're more likely to be able to draw this super out. And this is the meanest hive on the property. Woo! So why not, why not just go out and ask for trouble, right? So let's just uh, put it in here. We're gonna put it in between what they have here, already probably filled up. We'll drop it between the filled one. I normally top super, but in this case, to get it drawn out a little faster, I'm gonna bottom super. Out there working on the front, look at that, doing some washboarding, putting some propolis on the rough spot of the wood. Interesting. See how it's rough over there by the edges and they're putting propolis on there to smooth it over. All right, let's go ahead and put our frames in. And what I wanna to do to be fair about the one frame that has no wax on it, here it is right here, see that, no wax, other than what the company sent. Uh, already sprayed on there. Um, so I've marked it with the uh, NW around the label here. But what I want to do is put it, um, I'm going to put it next to the middle. So that to give it a fair chance. If you put it next to the wall, sometimes they, those don't get pulled out as fast. So let's go ahead and just um, put our frames in here like this. Look how wax coated they are. Isn't that crazy? Doesn't that look so like why wouldn't the bees pull that out really quickly, huh? <laughs> all right, let's get these installed in here and get all 10 of them in there. And then we'll be able to put that on the mean hive and see what that mean hive will do. Not really that bad, just a little meaner than the rest of my hives. All right, so, all right, let's take a look, make sure. So here's my one that does not have any wax on it in the middle. Uh, almost dead middle. Let's go ahead and move it out just a little bit more. We want it right in the middle. All right, so rest of them all have been wax coated except for this one. We'll see if it gets pulled out any slower or faster. And we're going to set a date of two weeks from today. Hey Siri, what is two weeks from August the 19th? It's Saturday, September 2nd, 2023. Okay, so Saturday, September the 2nd, we're gonna give them two weeks to impress us. Now, it may take longer, but we need to check in two weeks just to see how it's going, make sure the queen's not laying in there, all that good stuff. Oh, look, before we open up the hive today, Bobblehead David is here to please encourage you guys to subscribe. Click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video like this one where we experiment and get your questions answered by doing our own backyard study. You're gonna have to move, David. Bobblehead David. If Bobblehead David had a bee suit on his head, a hat and veil, we'd let him stay. But if you're in the bee yard, you gotta have a hat and a veil. <laughs> he didn't. 
All right, so this is this is a hive that's a bit more defensive. And they've got that propolized down really well. So a lot of smoke when you're working late in the year like this. We don't want to be uh, too long in the hive because we could start robbing frenzy somewhere. All right, there we go. Let's put our uh, top upside down. There's a small hive beetle or two killing those. All 10 of these frames are capped over, as you can see down in through between the frames, how capped over nicely everything is. So I'm hoping they'll do it again. I've actually, uh, first time to use my hive tool after I actually did a little bit of grinding on it. Remember that? Made it a little thinner. See if that helps get under that, uh, between the two boxes a little bit better. Oh gosh, it does. If you didn't see that video, drop back and watch that because I thinned out the, uh, the bevel on the hive tool. It helps a lot. Uh, this time of the year, hives are really propolized tightly together. And this is a heavy, uh, what is it, 40, 50 pound super maybe. I would say 60 or 70 pounds to make myself seem stronger. And it could be, I don't know, but right now it's propolized more than heavy. So we're gonna have to keep working the propolis loose. Have you ever had one of those times, beekeepers, you experience beekeepers where you keep trying to loosen the propolis and then you realize it is loose, but the super is just ultra heavy. <laughs> and you're like, what's keeping this stuck? And it's not stuck anymore at all. It's just heavy. It's gonna be heavy for us. So what I do sometimes is try to use my body, my hips or something, my leg. Oh, that's not, ooh, look at that. Look at that honey in between the frames. That's a good sign. Ooh, they're not that defensive right now. Very good. I'm gonna leave that there. All right, there we go. Got a little grass. All right, so as you can see here, we've got our frames in place. We're gonna make sure that everything is uh, smashed good toward the middle, like it is here. And then we're looking at the middle frame uh, the one that has no wax on it is being here. So there we go. And I'm going to do a technique in just a moment. I'm going to show you how to get bees up in here, okay? But that looks nicely set. So let's put our other super back on. Break my back one more time. I haven't damaged my back enough already. Oh, wow, that's heavy. Mmm. My frame shifted. You see that? So I can't have that. I'm gonna put it on the front. I'm gonna lift it up here. Okay, they look good. Now the technique I'm gonna use to get bees into the medium super we've put in the middle here is I'm gonna leave the top off just for a minute and I'm gonna smoke the bees from the bottom board. The theory here is that the bees will be forced to go up more into the super to escape the smoke. So let's get it started a little bit. I don't expect to see smoke come out of the top, but we can, you know, expect a little bit to come out. Just kind of running the bees up, moving them up more into that medium super that's more right here. That's probably enough. I can see bees already moving a little bit more here. All right, we got the top on there. I'm excited about this little thing that we've done to see for you guys if we can really get these frames drawn out late in the year like this. It's gonna be a good experiment. We've tested whether or not, uh, we're testing whether or not the bees are gonna draw out the frame that hasn't have any wax on it versus the ones that I've added a lot of wax to. And we'll see how it goes in about two weeks. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So check back on September the 2nd when I make that next video We'll check that hive out. Now, it's still August. We've got a hot week. I'm hot right now, but we got a really hot week. We're gonna reach 105 degrees. That's not the heat index. That's just the temperature, 105 Fahrenheit on Wednesday. Keep your bees cool. I've got a lot of videos made uh, that I've made on how to keep your bees cool. In fact, take a look at this video right here because you're facing a heat wave. 
how to keep your bees cooler. I'll see you guys over there.